5.1, angles of triangles. Classify the triangles by their sides, because there are two ways to classify angles. There's two parts of their name. You classify it by its type of sides and its type of angles. So if we start by the type of sides, if we have a figure like this, where there's no congruent sides, and the way that you labeled that is that you use different tick marks on all three sides. Now we've denoted that this has no congruent sides and this is scalene. If you're looking at one like this where it's got two congruent markings, two congruent sides, this is isosceles. I-S-O-S-C-E-L-E-S. -E -E Something to note about isosceles triangles is if they have two congruent sides, then their base angles, is what they're called, are also congruent. So the base angles are congruent and the opposite sides are congruent. Now, if you have three congruent sides, this is called an equilateral. Now, in a triangle, the three angles of a triangle always sum to 180 degrees. So an equilateral triangle is also, I'm gonna skip down here, it's also what's called equiangular. We mostly just call it equilateral, but you could call it equilateral equiangular. So if this is 180 degrees and it's equiangular, means that all three angles are the same size. So that would mean 180 divided by three means that each corner angle on equiangular triangles is 60 degrees, which also means that that's true for an equilateral triangle. All equilateral triangles have 60 degree angles in each corner. I'll say that again. All equilateral triangles and equiangular triangles have 60 degrees as their measure of the corner. Let's do the other triangles by their angles. If you have three acute angles with no special angles, it's just called an acute triangle. If you have one right angle, you classify it by that special angle, a right triangle. And then if it's got one obtuse angle, it's an obtuse triangle. So you would combo these to classify triangles. So it could be a scalene right or an isosceles obtuse or an isosceles acute. You would um, do one for the sides and one for the angles. So here's example number one. Classify the triangle OPQ by its sides by using the distance formula and then determine if it's a right triangle by comparing slopes. So first thing it wants to do is classify it by its sides. So if we look at this triangle, the two sides that look maybe the same length as PQ and OQ, I can clearly tell that PO is too short. So this could either be scalene or it could be isosceles, but I don't think it's gonna be equilateral. It's gonna be one of the two, either scalene or isosceles. So the two side lengths that I'd really like to compare are PQ and OQ. So what you can do on the diagram, especially if you have a grid, is you can draw in what the slope is. So the slope of this from P to Q is rise one and run one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what you've done is you've drawn in a right triangle that will help you find the distance of that third side because what you've done is made a triangle with two legs and a hypotenuse. So if we wanna find the length of PQ, we just use Pythagorean theorem, one squared plus seven squared because A squared plus B squared is going to give me C squared. So the distance, I really should put a little D in front of that, the distance of PQ is gonna be one squared plus seven squared one squared is one, seven squared is 49, but we're taking the square root of that, so the square root of 50. And I'm not gonna simplify that because today we're just trying to compare the length, so the, the length of this is the square root of 50. Um, we're just trying to compare it to the length of OQ is what we would like to do. So the distance of OQ is gonna be a rise of three, and a run of one, two, three, four, five, six. 
You can kind of tell already that those are not going to be the same size because their slope doesn't match. So uh, let's calculate it though. So three squared plus six squared, nine plus 36. And if you do nine plus 36, that's going to be the square root of 45. So are those the same length? No. So I can tell that this is going to be a scalene triangle. If they had been the same, if it had been the square root of 50 and the square root of 50, it would have been isosceles. So the last one we need to do is OP. So it's a rise of two and a run of one negative in this case, because we're going to have to compare slopes in just a minute. So then the distance from OP is going to be one squared plus two squared going to be 1 plus 4 square root of 5. So I can tell that this is a scalene triangle. None of the sides are the same length. Now the last thing is determine if it's a right triangle by comparing its slopes. So first thing you should do is kind of guesstimate where you think a right um, angle may live on the diagram because you don't wanna just fish around. Clearly this is not going to be a right angle. Clearly this one is not a right angle, it kinda does. But the only one that looks like it sort of could be a right angle is right here in the corner from PO to OQ. Looks like it could be right. So what we're looking for is negative reciprocals. Remember that's perfect opposites. So you're looking for the perfect opposite slopes between these two. So let's talk about the slope of PO first, M standing for slope of PO. So I rise two and run one to the left. So it's negative two over one or negative two. And we're trying to compare it to the slope of OQ. So the slope of OQ is rise three and run six. And I can simplify that. Three over six simplifies to one half. So now compare negative two to one half. Are those perfect opposites of each other? Yes, they are. So they are perpendicular, which means that this is a right triangle. So this is a scalene right triangle, and I can add a right angle in the corner right there. Example number two. In the painting, the red triangle, this is supposed to be red in the middle there, is a right triangle. And I can kind of see on the diagram, I believe that that corner right there is the right triangle. The measure of one acute angle is twice the measure of the other. Find each acute angle. So what we can do is we can pick a variable of our choice and call one of the angles our acute angle. I'm gonna call it this one, I'll call this one X. And then I know that it's the second angle is twice the measure of the other. So I can say two X for this other corner. What do we know about the sum of triangles, sum of angles in a triangle? Well, they sum to 180. So all we need to do is make an equation. So two X plus X plus 90 is 180 degrees. So you just sum the three angles together and set it equal to 180 degrees. That's 180 though needs to come from your brain. It comes nowhere on the diagram. You have to know that. So 3x plus 90 equals 180. Subtract 90, 3x equals 90. Divide by three and x equals 30. So that means that in this triangle, this corner is 30 degrees and this corner would be 60 degrees. All right, when the sides of a polygon are extended, you see how the arrows extend out here, other angles are formed. The original angles are interior angles. And that's this picture right here, interior. The ones that are on the inside of your intersections. The angles that form linear pairs with the interior angles are exterior. Remember that linear pairs are two angles that lie on a line together and they sum to 180 degrees. So this diagram here, if this angle measure were 80 degrees, then this angle measure would be 100 degrees. Those are a linear pair 
right next to each other. These are exterior angles. These outside angles that are not on the inside of the triangle. This is something that we just discussed, the triangle sum theorem. What's true about all the interior angles of a triangle? Well, they all sum to 180 degrees. All three angles, A plus B plus C is 180 degrees. Exterior angle theorem, this is a new one. So the measure of an exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the measures of the two non-adjacent interior angles. So I'm actually gonna jump down to this example to kind of prove it to you. So in this triangle, I know two of them and I could discover this third one and then subtract it from 180 to get this exterior angle, or we can use this new pattern. So if you take A plus B, I'm just kind of putting circles there, it's going to result in this measure C that's on the outside. So in this case, if I do 75 plus 64, that's gonna give me the measure of angle two. 675 plus um, 64 is 139 is the measure of angle two. Let's prove it to ourselves again. So if I do 75 plus 64, that's 139. If I do 180 minus 139, we would get this angle to be 41. And if you do 180 minus 41, you get this measure of angle two to be equal to 139. So you get the same angle measure back, no matter which direction you go, it's gonna be 139 degrees. Now on a problem like this, you don't have two angle measures to find the third, so you must use this exterior angles theorem. So we wanna find the measure of JKM, which is that exterior obtuse angle right there. So we're gonna follow the pattern, the two non-adjacents, so X plus 70, two non-adjacents, equals the measure of your exterior, 2X minus five, and we can solve for X. Subtract X, 70 equals X minus five plus five, so X equals 75. So you could plug 75 in here, subtract it from 180, blah, 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 or you can just plug it into this expression, two times 75 minus five, two times 75 is 150 minus five, so this is 145 degrees. So our measure of angle J, K, M is 145 degrees. Thank you.